Hello, and welcome to Who Are You? This is the Babylon 5 Watchcast, hosted by two former strangers, now friends, who are hanging out in person. Literally. Recording in the same room for the first time ever right now, while talking about one of their favorite shows from their childhood, Babylon 5. I'm Trefair. And I'm Laura, in person and in convoice. <laughs> Right, yeah. it's a little rough over here. <laughs> it's been—it's almost like we've been drinking for days. Yeah, and staying up till four thirty a.m. That's me, not so much to fair. I have been in—I think the latest I have stayed up any night this trip, time zone adjusting, is ten thirty p.m. Yeah, <laughs> that was last night. <laughs> So it would have been 6.30 a.m. for me that I stayed up till last night. And yeah. I don't know how I did it. I was just jazzed on being around people and didn't yeah. want to stop. It's That's a lot. <laughs> it's been it's been a great con. We're at Star, Tre- Star Trek Las Vegas, as we've alluded to, happening many times in the previous weeks. It's, Probably the last six months, yeah. really, yes. It's Sunday, so we're mostly through the con right now. We're going to go watch Todd Stashwick run a D&D game right after this. Very exciting. That's going to be a lot of fun. It's been a great convention. What are some of the highlights for you? Oh, gosh. I mean, same as 2022 for me, the highlights are my friends, like seeing yeah. friends that I have met only online and getting to meet them in person is my number one thing. But I did also really enjoy, as far as like panel-wise, Seeing Kate Mulgrew and John Delancey talk to each other. That was an excellent panel. Just like unmoderated conversation flowing between these two people who have been friends for a very long time. And also we love them because they're in our favorite show. Yeah. What about you? Um, That Kate Mulgrew, John Delancey panel for sure. Um, The Star Trek Strange New Worlds cast panels this Mm -hmm. morning were fantastic. The energy that they all have for Trek is fantastic. Yeah. And just being able to absorb some of that. Um, Lots of, I mean, this year's a bit different. So this is con number three for Mm -hmm. me. And this year we really rolled out with a crew. Yeah, we did. Um, You know, we've got us and our respective partners, Ben from last time on Mm -hmm. and uh, Glorianne from Cool Girls are all here. Some friends of mine from college have come along. Some friends Mm -hmm. from the Greatest Generation podcast listener pool. There are so many of them. I don't even think I've met them all yet. Oh, there's no way. There's so many here. There's, I would say, from the FOD meetups, like, I mean, you you were at the Cabanica two years ago. There was like eight of us. Yeah. Last year, there was maybe 15. There's going to be 30. Yeah, I think so. This easily. year, easy. And a lot of people didn't know it was going to be on Monday and aren't staying. Yeah. So it's going to be a lot tomorrow, too. Um, a handful of people in that community I am friends with outside of being a part of that community. A handful I am not. I have not gotten to spend any time with any of them that I didn't fly out here with. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to that tomorrow. It's just been a lot. It's been, I mean, our, I mean, my sister decided to come out last minute. Like, yeah. you know, there's 12 of us here. <laughs> I've met a group. member of Jafar's family now. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. it's It's been a really good time and been trying to do a little bit more Vegas stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first year was all convention. The second year I wanted to do Vegas off the strip stuff. This year I've tried to do a bunch of Vegas on the strip stuff. So I've been to a couple other hotel and casinos just to wander around. Went and had dinner at Morimoto's a couple nights ago, Mm -hmm. which was fantastic. Um, Great meal. So yeah, it's just been about all that for me this year. And I've had a really good time. Uh, I'm not quite ready to go home, but I feel myself on the precipice of being ready to go home. Yeah, definitely. Same. (laughs) Which is the perfect place to be. I think I'm going to be here just the right amount of time if the time zones worked in a different direction for heading home i would probably be heading home monday night instead of tuesday morning but Mm -hmm. just that cut in time i'm not taking a red eye back from vegas for four hours it's not enough time to sleep so i will just uh head back tuesday morning and go with there yeah I figure I'm probably going to need a really good night of sleep on Monday, considering how late I've stayed up. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, might I recommend Benny in a Bourbon? Mm. Uh, it's a, a sleep aid method that I profess sometimes. It's a shot of bourbon and two Benadryl. <laughs> you will fall asleep <laughs> immediately. Yeah, promise. I'm not worried about me when I'm <laughs> when I'm ready to sleep. I can sleep anytime, anywhere, for any reason. That's a a Bradfield trait. We can sleep where it, wherever we want, whenever we want. Nice. So. <laughs> So yeah, it's been really fun. It's it's exciting to get to do this podcast in person. I mean, we normally record with video on, so it doesn't feel like it's alien at no. all because mm-hmm. we normally read off of each other's like facial cues and stuff to have like a conversation like normal people. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it is it's fun. I'm glad that we've found the time to do this mm-hmm. like this because the opportunity has been very rare for that. Yeah, for sure. So being in separate time zones is already a challenge sometimes. Yeah. Even though it's the one hour time zone, it's really it's, not that hard. It still it still <laughs> has been impactful. Yeah. And if that ever changes, which it might. <laughs> uh, there's been talk about possibly moving to Scotland. Oh, my. Oh, we'll, we'll figure it out if that happens. But sure. I don't Right now, it's more of a pipe dream, but they really need people in my field, uh, and I'm not particularly happy with things. much of the political situation, much of the situation in the United States, generally speaking. Yeah, stuff and things. Not even <laughs> just, like, the ones you're probably thinking of. Yeah. You know. Anyways, that's probably not happening for a long time. Yeah. But what is happening very quickly is us talking about this episode of Babylon 5 Crusade. Well, we've got episode 12, Visitors from Down the Street. We open on what has to be the biggest question Babylon 5 has asked. Mm, ever, yes. Why the fuck is a spaceship on Eastern Standard Time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it, the question was, what is that smell? Oh, That's the second biggest question. For sure. <laughs> well, we find out what the smell is. We probably will never find out why the Crusade is, well, why the Excalibur is running on Eastern Standard. Yeah, for uh, sure. That's such a bizarre choice for absolutely no reason as far as I can fathom. I was really delighted by this whole smell subplot, though. Yeah. Because, you know, Gary Cole, as we have already alluded to, in office space. Mm-hmm. And this was a real thing not that long ago in my office. We all walk in one morning and it's like, what and where is that smell? Something something had died somewhere yeah. in the walls. I, I don't remember if we talked about this on pod, but I think we definitely talked about this. Yeah. That for just a couple of days, like the building maintenance was, it, it, the smell was worse in my office, of course. <laughs> and they were like drilling holes in my wall to stick a camera up there (laughs) trying to figure out where the thing had died oh no (laughs) and they couldn't they tried from the bottom they tried from the top but there was like something in the way Mm -hmm. and uh they're like this guy that gary cole has apparently been sending into the tubes they just like i don't know man it's (laughs) i can't find it but yeah um i don't I don't empathize like I don't I have, I have problems understanding the situation because I have a super keen sense of smell. Mm-hmm. And so I smell shit that like people don't smell all the time to the point where I'm just I've given up on it. <laughs> it used to be a game in college. I could tell you what the specials were in the cafeterias walking outside, like walking around outside the buildings on our way in. I could tell you what all the specials were. Hilarious. Um, and if I wasn't so, I don't know how I'm congested in Vegas. This is a fucking desert. But it's it's the cigarette smoke. Is it? It's got to be. That makes sense. Yeah, actually, now that you say it, that's obviously mm-hmm. it. Um, but yeah, it's just it, I just will always smell something like that. <laughs> um, so I've just given up on it. But I understand what Gideon's going through as he just gets obsessed with the smell on the tram. And then they quickly get a distress signal from a flying saucer. And we find aliens that are clearly Mulder and Scully aboard. Obviously. Like, the red tentacles for Scully's red hair. Right. It's like, this is a delight. I'm enjoying this. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
And for some reason, we are wearing Earth business suits. Yeah. We have one male, one female. We have the tentacle hair. We got paranoia and we got guns. Like they seem to have regular guns mm-hmm. that our molder analog pulls out. Yeah. So wait. I just I have... called them Mulder and Scully in my notes the entire time. I know that they had other names. I did not bother to write them down. No, I'm not sure that Scully was ever given a name. And I'm looking back at our producer and he's just shrugging. <laughs> he doesn't know either. <laughs> I think they had a name for her. They referred to point. Mulder more often and yeah. his name was Durkani. I caught that, but I didn't ever catch a name. I for think Scully. he says her name at one point. Probably once. Yeah. yeah. Uh, typical for 90s sci-fi. Yeah. They uh, grab one of the guards from the Excalibur because they want a hostage, but that doesn't go quite according to plan when Matheson telepaths into Mulder and makes him think that his gun is a snake, yeah. which is an interesting like choice. Huh. Like you're assuming that one they have snakes. Like I, I guess, I guess it could work one of two ways. You either make him fear the thing in his hand, and he saw the snake, mm, which implies point. that they ha- are an alien planet that has snakes that are recognizable to humans and scary, yeah. and scary. Um, or he put the snake there, and the dude had no idea what the fuck it was. Yeah, which would also be scary. Yeah, it's just like. For, I don't know, for tentacle aliens, snakes feels like a weird choice. Yeah. Because they're not quite Medusas, uh-huh. right? But they've got that kind of generic shape as part of their being. Yeah, yeah. He could yeah. just be, con- you know, you could read it as confused if if he did- wasn't frightened. Like, he yeah. could play it as confused as, like, what? Wh- how did this weird-looking tentacle get here? And that would be enough to, like, stop you. So. Yeah. yeah, if Matheson did snake on purpose, I don't, yeah, I think that it works. Yeah, I just would like, I don't know, go for like mammal. Yeah. <laughs> Something that is not <laughs> clearly what they look like, although I guess maybe that's what they eat. Ooh, you could put it's rats on, like he's yeah, holding a rats, rat. Right? That would be freaking scary. Big old teeth, like, ah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, but this is great because we haven't got a ton about the new telepath rules. Mm-hmm. And such, and so this the snake projection leads into a discussion between Gideon and Matheson about like what he's allowed to do. You know, he was yeah. it's an emergency situation. I'm allowed to project this, but I'm not still not able Reading to minds. invade his mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, he says that they were broadcasting fear, so they uh, get taken into custody. And as they're being led to the brig. We get a flashback to the two of them needing evidence for their claims and heading into space to find it. So we see these like space shuttles, right? They look like Earth space shuttles that they've got. Mm -hmm. But they're escape pods or flying saucers. That is an interesting choice for an escape pod. It seems like a very poor use of like physical space. Uh Uh-huh. Like... If you're flying saucers, right, you have because you need the rotation for whatever reason. I don't understand what purpose that would serve for an escape pod that's only going to be in space. It's a very right. ineffective means of locomotion, especially in space. Yeah, um, If true. it does anything, I don't, I mean, there might be a way to make it do a little bit by like fucking with the weight as it's spinning, but it seems very inefficient. And you would think that as an escape pod, like, you need to maximize efficiency. These are your lifeboats. Right. Like, you need to have pods for everyone on that ship. And so they need to be very efficiently shaped and sized Mm -hmm. and located so that in an emergency, we're getting on those pods and we're getting the hell out of here. I don't think a saucer is your most efficient shape. No. Unless they were, like, loaded in a manner where, like, the brims were kind of like overlapping maybe. Okay. And if they did serve some kind of purpose that I don't understand, I know it's just like, it's the X-Files. So they're in a flying saucer. We we need to do this for like other reasons. Yeah. It's for the bit for sure, which I will always appreciate doing something for the bit like that. But it's just, I don't know. It's funny. It's a weird choice. If you think about it, it's funny, but that's, you know, this is episode is supposed to be funny yeah so good for them the other thing i wanted to point out about this episode before we get too far because i noticed it right away 
was that I love the music so much more, and it's because they're doing X-Files music. Yeah. They're not trying to do Crusade music, and this X-Files music is much better. Yeah, it slaps. <laughs> For sure. It's much better than our normal synth core techno mage drum beats. Yeah. <laughs> God, that's a YouTube channel I never want to find. Anyways, Gideon misses coffee and the wind. Hmm, he has a conversation fair. about things on spaceships and how they're different. I imagine I would feel similarly. I I feel kind of the same being cooped up in this hotel for several days. Uh huh. Yeah. Like if it wasn't 110 out, maybe I'd go get some air on my face. But yeah, the air hurts your face right now. Yeah, so it's not good. No, thank not, you. Not interested. Yeah, I could really dial back the wind being from where the wind comes sweeping down the plane, you mm-hmm. know, at like 70 miles an hour or whatever Yikes. it is. Uh, but you we know, don't get that up yeah. in Michigan. <laughs> we, we do some some serious wind. And uh, I could dial it back a little, but I would also, I think I would have that whole stale canned air problem if I was on yeah. a spaceship or station. I could definitely, it would get to me sooner rather than later, for sure. Yeah, so they're very confused about these aliens. Yeah, uh, there are some incongruities that don't quite line up. Yes, Dr. Chambers, not seen in this episode, but she has provided mm-hmm. intel that they are very different from humans, but they have a lot of knowledge of English. They are yeah. They speak a different language. They are translating in their minds to English. She can yeah. tell that from like their brain waves and stuff. And then, of course, they are dressed like humans. Yeah. So what's going on? Yeah, it's some weird choices. And Gideon is cu- curious. And uh, how first contact works here is it's Captain's prerogative. So he's going to go in and talk to them. Mulder is unable to hold down his contempt at Gideon's lack of knowledge of the grand conspiracy of which he is clearly a part of. Yeah. He learned English from recordings that he found deep underground, but also later in the episode, they make it sound like English is a super common language that they've been letting everyone learn. Right. Right. So did he just get a jump start on it and then they said, fuck it, or... I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Maybe he's the WikiLeaks of this whole thing, and he's been, like, uh, leaking the English recordings for others to learn. That might be what happened. Uh, Gideon agrees to uh, bring him whatever he needs from their pod to prove his case that there is a conspiracy. And if Mulder can prove it, Gideon will take them home personally to investigate further. Yeah. Meanwhile, B-plot... A grunt in this is in the tubes. Yes. Looking for the smell. Can't find that smell. We ain't found shit. Yeah. Hmm. Mulder uh, makes his case to Gideon. He's got a picture of a blimp that was labeled swamp gases. Uh-huh. A crash landing of humans and a golf club. Yeah. I'm wondering about the golf club. I mean, the crash landing was labeled weather balloon. Yes. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Uh, where? How did we get the golf club? You just figure out what it is, I guess. You see it on TV. You've intercepted stuff. You make your own golf club. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a photo of Mount Rushmore. Yes. I like how we sent this probe to Earth. You mm-hmm. know, uh, Mulder talks about he personally ordered this probe somehow to Earth. Yeah. And Mount Rushmore is what you see. You don't see like the cities and the peoples and the satellites. Oh, well, the probe was never actually at Earth. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, no, they've never actually had... They can not They can barely leave their solar system. Yeah. Like, okay. there's no way. Yeah, so he's um, getting the falsified probe. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, so the implication is that these aliens think that they are, like, next door to Earth. Like, y'all are neighbors, right? Mm. Yeah, but where the are they exactly? But the plot of Crusade is that they're, like out on the fringes of known space. Mm. They're going to civilizations that are all dead or whatever way out there, because anything that's close, they would have explored already, or the Mimbari would have, or Mm -hmm. someone, you know, this entire, someone would have already done some shit. So they're out in the area of space where they don't know shit about shit. Yeah. (laughs) And so there's no way that they are anywhere close to Earth. Mm -hmm. So it's just happenstance they there's no way they could probably reach earth 
Yeah. And I don't think the government would want to pick a planet because, I mean, as we find out at the end of this episode, this is all a ploy. It's all a big government conspiracy. It's like layers upon layers upon layers. Yeah. It's an onion. You keep pulling apart and it keeps being more. Yeah. More of the onion. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, I would think that you would not want to be close to the race that you were blaming for all of your problems, because there will per certainly be some expectation to do some shit. Yeah. If the conspiracy is ever unveiled. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So we flash back. We have another like Mulder and Scully being assaulted in their office. Mm -hmm. And speaking of layers and onions. They assault one of these attackers. They managed to subdue one. <laughs> I warned you about this scene. You did. I had no idea what you were talking about. Listeners, uh, so, you know, we've had a busy con. Yeah. And there was a time yesterday where I was like, okay, I'm going up to watch Crusade now. And Aaron and I both sat down. We got the episode downloaded. We start watching it. And Aaron is literally nodding off on the couch. Not necessarily because this is a bad episode. All episodes of Crusade are not the best, but it this one is not that bad. Yeah. Um, but we're just tired because it's a busy con. So he goes and lays down, and I'm like, I'm too tired to take notes, but I'll just watch. No, dead ass asleep for 30 minutes of the episode. I caught like the front five and the back five, <laughs> and that's it. So I did watch it again today, and mm -hmm. Jafar had already made like a reference to this sometime yeah. yesterday. So we have this attacker that we have subdued him. I don't know if he's dead or just knocked out. Yeah. We, we realize his face is a mask. We pull it off. Mm -hmm. Underneath his face is a human face. Dun, dun, dun. And of course, my, my little brain is spinning about, oh, okay, well, are there some like rogue humans out here like pulling a long con? Oh, yeah. I totally, for a second there, I thought it was like IPX doing some shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, okay, so who's, who's pulling this long con? And then... As the you know the dramatic moment progresses, we pull off the human face, and underneath it is another alien face. I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. Yep, <laughs> the same alien to be clear, not mm -hmm. some third unknown. Yes, alien. Yes, true. Although, what if it was like a Narn under there or something? <laughs> That'd be hysterical. You can just keep the conspiracy yeah. just going and going right. and going. Yeah, <laughs> just another mask and then another mask. Yeah. But they don't pull that bit too far. You know, we just yeah. have the three faces. But I had a very good chuckle. Yeah, it's so absurd. This is the highlight of this episode for me, 100%. The mask under the mask mm -hmm. is just so good. It's so good. Gideon wants to know why. That's That's the big question here. It's all like, okay, well, yeah, it looks like humans have fucked around on your world and there's some... Like, you shouldn't fucking know English. Like, there's some problems here. But why the fuck would we even care? Yeah. Like, we're not in, like, we're not running around trying to, like, enslave species or something, and we're prepping you for that, a la, like, some childhood end or some V shit. You know, uh -huh. like, none of that is going on here. Yeah. Um, That's not what humanity's doing in the stars. So it's just, like... What the actual fuck? Yes. Gary Cole is all of us in this episode. <laughs> Gary Cole is the audience. Yes, very much so. He's just like, it doesn't make sense. And then another ship pulls up, also unidentified, and they hail the Excalibur in English. Mm -hmm. And Gary Cole here drops just a charm of a line. Either more of the, it's either more of the same race or there is an extremely busy English teacher hiding out here. <laughs> yes, yes, very good. And it's Glow, we find out, is the extremely busy English teacher out there. Extremely busy and extremely competent. Yes. Yes, we've been going through all the Chaucer, we've been working on our speech and our drama, mm -hmm. clearly, yeah. with all these aliens. Yes. Um, I wanted to say one thing about before we get Mr. Kendar on board mm -hmm. and we get this hail, we had Mulder giving us this very impassioned speech about, you know, these aliens, you, you all are controlling our government. You are cutting the money to our schools so that mm -hmm. we're ignorant and we cannot confront you and fight back. You are cutting our public housing to keep us in disarray and poor 
Um, and it's just kind of sad because it feels a little real that our alien is projecting the shittiness of his own government and people onto this crazy conspiracy theory about aliens, because I feel like we've had that recently. Yes. Like this is happening to us actively. There's definitely a lot of that in the government and there's a lot of people blaming absolutely the wrong people for it. Yes. Not just holding the entire government accountable, which is what we should be doing. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's why Jaffer wants to move to Scotland. (laughs) Considering. (laughs) So they want uh, Mulder. The the alien shows up. You you, you wrote down his name. I literally just called him the cigarette smoking man the entire time. I I also did not bother with his name because that's clearly who this character was well before he pulls out a cigarette in the third act. I think that you have to explain, you two who have seen X-Files, producer and Jaffer, okay. the cigarette smoking man, because I feel like this was a reference you kind of made yesterday and I did not understand. So the cigarette smoking man is a government agent who basically represents the head of the conspiracy to hide aliens. Mm. Um, I don't think he's with the FBI. I don't remember. He's not like their boss. I think he, he's Mulder's dad or something. It's always your dad. It's something. There's it's the some, dads. We want to fight our dads. There's like a familial connection there somewhere. <laughs> I, maybe he's an uncle or something. I don't know. I haven't watched the X Files in well twenty years, give or take. Mm. So I don't really remember a lot of the details there. But he is the uh, the effective representative of the human side of the conspiracy to hide alien activity on Earth. Mm. Um, he's the guy who actually knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. and is a constant thorn in the side of Mulder and Scully. And in this case, he's the guy actively making all the shit up about the aliens. Yes. Rather than the guy hiding aliens, he's the guy, like, planting all the pieces. Yeah. So uh, the cigarette smoking man comes on board. He explains uh, what's going on. Basically, he gets Mulder and Scully to kind of play their hand a little bit. Um he explains this is all just a uh, a setup. This is all there so that they don't get conquered or great barriered out of existence until they can catch up with the rest of the galaxy. They know that they are technologically enfeebled compared to all of the other major races and want to spend time not leaving their immediate star system. And so they are purposefully, as a society, humbling themselves in order to have time to develop more advanced technology so that way when they do go out into the greater universe, they don't just get curb stomped immediately. Yeah, and this is, he confronts Mulder and Scully, but the explanation winds up being to just Gideon, I think. Yeah. And as as all of these things are like happening, Mulder eventually kidnaps the cigarette smoking man. Yeah. He's the hostage. He is demanding that Gideon charge the pod. We mm-hmm. want to get out of here. You know, give me my helicopter. Got to get out. Or my my airplane and my bucket of cash. And uh, we'll be on our way. And Gideon's like, this is all so fucking stupid. I would love to just do that. Can we just do that <laughs> at this you point? Please fucking leave? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but as, as Mulder has kidnapped the cigarette smoking man... He hit, he smells he smells it in the tube. Yeah, it's like oh, there's what, something here. There's a there's a horrible smell. What yeah. is that? They go through the tunnels on foot. The mobile infantry is looking around when Gideon finds the source of the smell and pours poop on people. That's the that's it. That's the payoff. Yep. I. Was a little surprised. I thought that we were going to like play it into like, oh, it knocks them. The the horrible smell knocks out the aliens. And that's how we like catch up to them and, and take care of everything. Nope. Nope. Literally just Gideon's like, oh, my God. He sees the pipe that is loose. And he's like, it's this pipe. And he just like grabs it. Yep. And pulls it. And then just plop, 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 plop. Just, just poop. Yep. Just it's a chocolate fountain. <laughs> As someone who recently saw a chocolate fountain in Hershey, Pennsylvania, 
it's exactly what it looked like. The mm. the prop was identical to the one on the little Hershey ride you take. Mm, delicious. At Hershey World. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep, it's just a bunch of waste. All comes pouring out of there. It just gets loosened every time it rolls by and lets a, out a little whiff. And then Gideon just breaks the fucking thing mm-hmm. and just makes it so much worse. And I don't even want to think about having to repair that. They're on like a ladder. They're like climbing up. Flights. They're climbing just, past the pipe. Yeah, right? yeah. So we know that there's people. We've seen a large group of people with him mm-hmm. on both when they get out and before they go in. The implication is that like he just poured poop on like twenty people <laughs> on this ladder. <laughs> yeah, because we see like a dozen when they're out in the next scene, and none of them are covered in poop. Yeah. So there's got to be more people that were covered in poop that are just <laughs> peeled off. You're just yeah. Gonna pass. <laughs> like, don't worry about shooting this dude anymore. Uh-huh. Just go, go take a shower. You gotta go see Doctor Chambers about some some yeah. antibiotics or something. Oh, for sure. <laughs> uh, so Gideon and the troops get Mulder and Scully here, and he gets some breeze for his troubles. Yeah. As the, uh, as the trains run by, he feels breeze on his face. Genius. Genius. Uh, Mulder and Scully peace out on their escape pod when they find the cigarette smoking man's gun was never loaded in the first place. Oh. <laughs> he just laughs it all off. And then he turns from cigarette smoking man to Ozymandias. This whole using humanity and a scapegoat is to prevent internal conflict and to just unite the people and blame them for everything that's the actual reason for the conspiracy Mm. all the other stuff was bullshit yeah you can't do the big tentacle monster because we're all tentacle monsters so that's no good no good Mm -hmm. (laughs) gideon decides to shit on their whole government conspiracy though uh they roll up to the planet and launch a bunch of probes that reveal the truth to the aliens there's no way this actually works, right? Like, they've been, like, mm. their government's been seeding all this stuff about human intervention, and now humans have intervened. Oops. <laughs> like, if anything, this just makes the conspiracy this is, stronger. Yeah, this is going to get spun, right? Like, 100%. This is a gift to Ozymandias, accidentally. But For sure. I do love Gary Cole's, like, chaotic energy about yeah. the whole thing. Just like, like, fuck it. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> fuck some shit up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is like got to be one of the hardest fuck the prime directive moves in history. Like, obviously, they don't have the prime directive, mm-hmm. but this is a pre warp species that is being intervened with by their own government, faking out stuff for humanity, and just like completely change the development and future of this species in like 30 seconds because you're pissed of one dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's some real like Janeway. I feel like Janeway might pull this if she was mad enough. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> just damn just the whole thing just just damn mm-hmm. after all this wraps gideon goes to the tunnels to feel wind and drink some tea to credits mm-hmm. sipping that tea yep. he's a little kermit the frog back there mm-hmm. love it love it so i gotta ask laura on a scale of one to four main guns firing how did you feel about this episode? I have been very generous to the show lately. Yeah. I recognize that. Um, I am going to continue that streak here. Even though I've never seen X-Files, this episode was a delight. I absorbed enough of like X-Files pop culture just existing in the 90s. Like mm-hmm. I understood the references. Not all of them, obviously, because I didn't know the cigarette smoking yeah. thing. But I, I got the suits and I got the hair and, and Scully's whole deal and Mulder's whole deal. And I loved how over it Gary Cole was. Like, <laughs> Gideon's just like, what the fuck? This is stupid. This is all four main guns firing. I'm having oh, a great sure. time here. Uh, same. This is a uh, all four main guns firing, only to have the mask pulled off of the Excalibur uh-huh. to reveal all four main guns firing again. <laughs> like, it is absurd. <laughs> I I really enjoyed this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was perfect for the con. Like oh, this yeah. was great vibes for 100%. this in person record. 
Yeah, no, this was this was just the hilarious episode that I really fucking wanted out of this show. Uh-huh. And it wasn't another dead fucking world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to describe the magic box to somebody yesterday at the masquerade bar at like 3 a.m. <laughs> and how, how much I fucking loved the box. I was like, this... This is the moment I turned and I was like, I fucking love this show. Give me more fucking magic box. Like <laughs> it was it was a great conversation. It's so absurd. Um Yeah, I don't know where you go from here. Mm-hmm. Um I know that we've got like we've been kind of hanging out in like the middle of the pack of episodes after the increased budget from TNT hit. I know that with uh, the necessity of like our watch order and how we're going about things, we're going to be going back to earlier produced episodes that were pre the budget increase. Oh no. And we've seen what these ones look like. (laughs) So I don't know that the series is going to get any better than this episode. We'll see, (laughs) but we won't be finding out next week because next week we go on our mid season movie break. Yay. I'm so excited. We're going to watch office space. We were hoping to watch office space and do it here at STLV and invite a bunch of our friends to come along and watch it and talk about it with us. I don't think that's happening. Yeah, no, I think we've used up a lot of our time yeah. doing other things, but they were all very important, fun For other sure. things. For sure. Uh, no no regrets on how we spent the time at the convention. It's just not going to happen. So we'll, we'll record it sometime after we get back and have time to recover. Um, there may or may not be guests for it. Yeah, no idea. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I just, we, haven't, we haven't talked to anyone about it. We'll see. We'll see yeah. what happens. I don't know. Maybe tomorrow at the pool party we'll put out some feelers. Yeah, this is a magical place. Magic can happen. We can believe. I saw Sean Farrick at a hallway earlier today and just pointed at him and said, thank you. And he looked at me and said, no, thank you. And it was a <laughs> magical moment. So, I mean. Beautiful. Yeah. it's it's it, Strange things can happen in Stra- at Star Trek Las Vegas. So, we'll see what happens then. But before we see what happens, we have to, of course, say thank you. Of course. Jeremy, man. I wish you were here. I understand you're not and the stuff going on that led up to that. I know mm-hmm. you got some stuff going on in your life that's taking up some time later in the year. So bummer. Maybe next year it'd be mm-hmm. great to have a beer and shoot the shit. It would. But until then, I have to say thank you for composing the lovely theme music. And if you want to find more of Jeremy, you oh, yeah. can do that. He is a Nuclear Jaguar on iTunes, Spotify, all those other things. Mm-hmm. And also on Bandcamp, yeah, as Jeremy Siegel forty two dot Bandcamp dot com, where he's the only Jeremy Siegel of any importance. <laughs> yeah, Angry Duck Time Machine. Thanks so much for our art. We need to talk to you really soon about the Battlestar art. Yeah, yes, I I will get on that. Okay, I think we've made some decisions on that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think I think we know what we're gonna do. Okay. Aaron. Hey. In the room. Hey, you, you can <laughs> lean in. If you want, you don't have to say anything. You can, you're gonna, you well, you're just gonna edit it out if you don't like it. So that's fine. Uh, thanks so much for editing the podcast. Yeah, thanks, baby. And just hanging out. It's been cool to just <laughs> chill. It's been great. Uh, and thank you, listeners, for being here for this very special episode. Yeah. Very special episode of Crusade and very special episode of our podcast. Yeah, we're so glad you were here. If you want to chat about it, please join our Discord. Or uh, email us at whoareyoub5 at Mm gmail.com. I'm here for another two days, and I will be only taking any corrections for those two days handed over with a tiki drink. Those are the (laughs) rules. All right. Bye. Bye.